So Judge Benitez found that California's assault weapons ban is unconstitutional and struck it down, but he also issued a 30 day stay. What does that mean? What happens now? And why did he do that? You can get all those answers in this video. So let's talk about it. But real quick, before we jump into this video, if you agree with Judge Benitez's ruling, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a big shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, if you're in the market for something like that, I highly recommend USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. So by now, I'm sure a lot of you are very much aware that Judge Benitez did issue his ruling in the Miller v. Bonta case slash Miller v. Becerra which challenges California's assault weapons ban uh, language here in Penal Code 30515. Uh, we've talked about this case very comprehensively on this channel in the lead up of all of this, and I gave you guys an update yesterday. One of those big updates was that he did issue his order finding that this penal code, that this language in the state of California is a Second Amendment violation, is a constitutional violation. But along with that, he issued a 30 day stay on his own judgment. And since I put out that last video, a lot of you guys were asking me questions. So I want to answer those to give you guys some more insight and let you know how this is going to proceed forward. So let's get into this. So the first main thing I want to address real quick, and I'm still a little confused why people are asking this question, but a lot of people are asking, well, can I go out and purchase things? Can I take the fin grip off of my rifle? Can I do X, Y, and Z? As of right now, you still cannot do that because of the 30 day stay that Judge Benitez put on his own order. So right now, the old status quo in the state of California still stands. The penal code 30515 is still in effect and you have to go no further than looking at the California DOJ website where they even said that after this ruling saying that, hey, the language is still in effect, you can't go do these things, so no, hold on, you cannot configure your rifles differently now and change them back into standard rifles or do anything like that. Beyond that, the next question that I've been getting asked a lot is what happens from here? What happens now with this whole appeal and stay up to the Ninth Circuit? I and mean, then what happens with all of what Judge Benitez did in putting a stay on his own judgment for 30 days? The uh, state of California actually only has seven days to file a stay and seek a stay from the Ninth Circuit. And this is coming directly from the Ninth Circuit in their practice guides and in their own very rules. And this is coming directly from the Ninth Circuit rules 27-2. And it states if a district court stays in order or judgment to permit application to the Court of Appeals for a stay pending appeal, an application for a stay must be filed in the Court of Appeals within seven days after the issuance of the district court's stay. So that's exactly what Judge Benitez did here. He issued a stay on his own judgment so that the state of California could go seek a stay from the Ninth Circuit. And because of that, under the rules here, the state of California only has seven days to file that. So next week, we will be keeping our eyes on seeing if the state of California seeks a stay. The likelihood is that they will seek a stay from the Ninth Circuit, and we will see that filed. Now, you may be thinking to yourself at this point, okay, the state of California is going to seek a stay by the Ninth Circuit. Well, the Ninth Circuit is just going to grant that. We've seen that happen in the past. But there is a little bit more nuance to this because when you seek a stay from the Ninth Circuit, that goes to not just the Ninth Circuit at large. It goes specifically to a motions panel. And this panel in the Ninth Circuit only addresses specifically motions like a motion to stay. And that is what they do. The motions panel in the Ninth Circuit actually circulates and is random every single month. And there is going to be three judges on that motions panel. And for evidence of this, you go again to the Ninth Circuit's rules and you can go to their practice guides as well. And it talks exactly about this. And it says that uh, it talks about selection of motions panel. A single motions panel is appointed for the entire circuit. That panel sits in San Francisco for several days, which is going to be important that they sit in San Francisco for several days. We'll talk about that a little bit later. If necessary, emergency motions are acted on by telephone. Judges are ordinarily assigned to the panel on a rotating basis by the clerk for a term of one month. So this month, there is a randomly selected um, three judge motions panel that kind of addresses all those main motions like a motion to stay in the Ninth Circuit. Now, you may be asking to yourself now at this point is, OK, who is on the panel on this motions panel this month of June? Well, of course, when you go to the Ninth Circuit's website and you try to find out who's on the motions panel and you go to that page on the Ninth Circuit, it's blank. So we don't know who's on the motions panel this month. And maybe one of you guys knows out there and you can find it yourself. I searched all over trying to figure out who's on the motions panel this month, but I could not find it. So that's another piece that's really important is actually trying to figure out who's on that motions panel. And depending on what judges are on that motions panel, that could have huge implications for whether or not the Ninth Circuit actually grants the state's stay or not. 
Now, one more thing I wanna bring into this that we talked about just real quickly and I said you wanna keep this in mind as I was going through this. It talks about the motion panel sitting in San Francisco. So that's important, I wanna note that because all of the timing that's going on with this specific issue. Judge Benitez, like I said, issued a 30-day stay on his judgment. The state of California has those seven days to file and seek a stay from the Ninth Circuit. Well, when you look at the Ninth Circuit calendar, it's very revealing. So when you look at uh, San Francisco dates of when the Ninth Circuit is actually going to be hearing things, um, for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco, the first one that's going to arise when the Ninth Circuit is going to be in San Francisco hearing uh, cases, issues, motions, that is gonna be June 14th through 18th. So that means that the state of California will file in July 11th and the earliest time in which the Ninth Circuit motions panel will likely address this maybe June 14th to 18th. Now, this isn't absolute. This is subject to change. If I get more information, I'll update this, but this is kind of just speculation looking at the Ninth Circuit's calendars and trying to piece some things together. Again, because the Ninth Circuit doesn't make this easy by giving us actual motion panel information on their website because that's blank. Um, beyond that, after June 14th and 18th, the next time that the Ninth Circuit is going to actually be sitting in San Francisco is July 6th and 9th. And why that should ring a bell is July 6th and 9th is after July 4th when Judge Benitez's 30-day stay actually ends, which means if the Ninth Circuit motion panel doesn't theoretically address in that first time that they're in San Francisco, the 14th through the 18th, maybe the next time that they will actually have an opportunity to address this whole motion and the seeking of the stay won't be until July 6th and 9th, and that would be after his actual stay runs out. Now, I know at this point, some people are saying, well, they'll just seek an emergency stay because that's been kind of thrown out a lot. And we've seen the state of California seek an emergency stay once before recently in the Rodi v. Becerra case. Well, this is actually important and we need to address this as well. And this also goes to the major question that I've been getting a lot about people asking, why did Judge Benitez put a 30 day stay on his own order? The first answer to that is because he had to. He had to address this issue of the stay because the state of California specifically asked in their papers of Judge Benitez, if you rule against us, we want you to issue a stay. So the way that the procedures work the state of California first has to seek a stay from Judge Benitez himself, and they did that in their papers. If Judge Benitez denied that stay right then and there, they then could go seek an emergency stay by the Ninth Circuit because his order would go effective immediately. It would have went effective yesterday, and then they could have gone through the emergency stay process, and that's a much more expedited process. There's like a phone number, an email like list on the Ninth Circuit where they can actually seek that from the Ninth Circuit, and we've seen the Ninth Circuit issue those in the past overnight in the Rodi v. Becerra case, which dealt with California's ammunition restrictions. So that was kind of a worst case scenario. So he had to address it, and either he had to put a stay on his own order in granting the state of California stay, which they are seeking from him, or you would have to deny that stay, and then the state of California just would have went and sought a stay from the Ninth Circuit, but an emergency stay. This way, in what Judge Benitez did in issuing a 30-day stay on his own judgment, it actually prevented the state of California from seeking an emergency stay based on the Ninth Circuit's rules. And this comes from the Ninth Circuit's Rule 27-3, and what it states is that the state of California could only seek an emergency stay from the Ninth Circuit if they could not get relief um, by 21 days. Well, here, since Judge Benitez put a stay on 30 days on his judgment, that is well beyond the 21-day relief that is required. Therefore, the state of California could not seek an emergency stay by the Ninth Circuit. So main takeaways from all this. One, there is still a 30-day stay. You cannot go purchase uh, these types of rifles. You cannot configure your AR-15s back into traditional forms. We are still on hold. The state of California language is still in effect. Beyond that, What's going to happen from here is the state of California is going to have to file for a stay from the Ninth Circuit by June 11th. They have seven days to do so, and that time runs out June 11th. So we should see that popping up next week or maybe the week after that when it actually hits the docket. Beyond that, what does that mean? Well, it's going to go to the motions panel. The motions panel is randomly selected every month. We don't know who's sitting on the motion panel this month, but they sit in San Francisco. And based on them having to sit in San Francisco, this could lead to some very interesting timing stuff because of Judge Benitez's 30-day order. And maybe that could run out by the time the motions panel actually sits and gets to address the stay that the state of California is seeking. 
And finally, beyond that, to answer a lot of the questions of why did he issue a 30-day stay, it's because he had to address a stay in some form. He either had to grant or deny the state's request for a stay in their papers. If he would have denied it, they would have just sought an emergency stay last night. By granting a temporary stay, it funnels them into the traditional mechanisms of seeking a stay from the Ninth Circuit. So hopefully that helps clear up a lot of questions. I'm sure a lot more questions will pop up because I know this is a very um, hot topic right now. I'm not saying all this is gospel in here. This is from what I could gather by doing additional research, looking into the Ninth Circuit's like rules and procedures. Um, if I gather any more information, if I learn anything else, I will definitely let you guys know and update you. But hopefully this helps clarify a lot of stuff and gives you guys more insight on where we go from here based on what Judge Benitez did in his order and based on all the rules and procedures for the Ninth Circuit. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure that notification bell because it helps the channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment, and also spread the word about 2A news like this as going on in the state of California. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and states only maintain by armed scholars.